everybody, welcome to a Tatter Effect. I'm Taryn. We are here at the Girls Inc. studio in Las Vegas. And October is a National Depression and Mental Health Screening Month, if you didn't know that. So I thought, I might be wrong, but I thought... Uh, that would be a good topic on today's episode um, because, you know, this is something that I just recently have started op- opening up a little bit about myself, like publicly, um, which is super hard to do and super scary because you feel vulnerable and I think for a long time there was like shame involved. For me personally, I just felt shame and I felt like embarrassed by my, my issues, my mental health issues. And um, I think only recently I even acknowledged and said the words out loud like mental health. Um, I used to call it out like as depression, as anxiety, as racing thoughts, whatever. But, you know, I think the dialogue has been so healthy, open and transparent lately. I mean, you're seeing even, um, you know, celebrities and people we admire and men, you know, coming out publicly, sports figures that we look at as being, you know, tough and strong and um, coming out and opening up and being raw and honest and talking about their mental health issues. So it wasn't too long ago, I actually said the words out loud uh, to my wife, Kat, like I have mental health issues. And that, that was hard for me to do, but that's my truth. That's like who I am. And it's just a part of my life and it's a part of my story. And now it's a part of Kat's life. <laughs> uh, lucky me. <laughs> and her story. Yeah. Because you're my life partner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, yep, I have noticed it for quite some time, but I don't think you had a big realization about what was going on with you. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I always knew. I just thought, ah, uh, you know, it's like I'm, I, you know, I'm moody or I get sad, I get depressed. You know, it's in my family. I have family members. Um, I have a parent who deals with um, depression, mood swings. Huge, yes. Huge. And, you know, they say if one of your parents has mental health issues, there's a 50% chance... Uh, your children will, if both parents have mental health issues, then pretty much the kids are what shit out of luck. I mean, it's, 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 I think it's like 85%. Yeah, it's like 85%, yeah. you know, it's, it's, um, there's a good chance the children are. And, you know, you and I, when we were growing up, we didn't talk about this stuff, you know, I, and I can remember as far back, little kid, um, being so sad and isolating, isolating. And I didn't know what that was, you know. And, and I can remember some moments through, you know, my childhood trying to maybe express that to my parents somehow, some way. And, um, you know, and I can just remember them saying, well, You know, I I think back then they looked at like, well, what do you got to be sad about? You know, Mm -hmm. it's like you live in a great neighborhood. You got great friends. Mm -hmm. You got this, you got that. Oh, you know, what do you got to be sad about? There's there's people out there that really have things to be sad about. I think that might have been the mindset of some families, some people, you know, all those years ago, right? Yeah, definitely. My family too, same thing. It's kind of was just like ignored if it was existed. Yeah, yeah, it was ignored. Um, I think if I knew how to express myself, um, you know, I've got two good parents, and uh, they would have been proactive. 
but I don't think I knew how to express that. You know, maybe I acted out, maybe I tried to tell them in certain ways, but the message just wasn't getting delivered, you know? Because it's something they would probably never think of. Probably they would never think of, yeah. right. You know, because, you know, like we said, it wasn't really talked about back then. But, you know, thank goodness nowadays it's, it's, it's talked about and it's, it's much more acceptable. I, I think that there is still a stigma, you know, um, but I think we've come a long ways and, but yet still have work to do and uh, a ways to go. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, especially maybe with men, you know, maybe in certain cultures, um, there is still that 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 stigma. I I, I think, and uh, but you know, we've come like like a long, 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 long way. Um, I, um, you know, I like my personal mental health issues are uh, depression. And different levels of depression. Sometimes it can just be a little depression. Sometimes sit on the couch, watch TV. Yeah, a little yeah, bit. zone out. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes it can be severe depression, where I'm making things real mm-hmm. that are not real, and it causes me to get super depressed and um, kind of check out a little bit and. But would you agree that I'm much more aware now and I've developed some tools yeah. to help me not stay in that space for too long or not nearly as long as I used to get stuck in that dark, depressive, you know, state? I remember seeing you manic. You had that real that mania where you your eyes get wide and you, you talk really fast and and I would say, Taryn, you're manic. You'd be like, No, I'm not. <laughs> you didn't even know. I don't think you knew what it was, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't even know what it was, and so I didn't know what it was. I didn't recognize it in myself. I just thought I was excited. <laughs> you know, I just thought I, I was excited, but I didn't know why I couldn't stop talking so fast. I didn't know what, and I could feel physically feel my eyes big Mm -hmm. like it almost like exhausted my eyes (laughs) you're excited but you're also irritable at the same time yeah it was all in one it was all in one so did a lot of research talked to a lot of people um did a lot of um you know self-awareness and and just taking a long hard look at myself and you know those are called manic episodes and I remember when I was researching like manic episodes, what is manic behavior? And they tend to attach that to bipolar mm-hmm. disorder. Um, and I've never been diagnosed with bipolar or anything like that. I don't think I have bipolar. Well, there's levels to bipolar too. Yeah. So maybe I am low, low level, you know, maybe, yeah. maybe you know, because I do get those manic episodes. Um, and of course there's people out there that get those manic episodes on a scale and a level, you know, way beyond me. We all experience, um, you know, these issues differently. They all, Mm -hmm. it affects us all differently. There's, you know, many different levels and components to them. So, uh, but I do recognize now that I do get those, those manic episodes Um, like, you know, for instance, um, and you notice this about me after like a big conference, a big Mm -hmm. class, something really super exciting in PMU, um, you know, the high that I would be on the energy, you know, that I would have, um, you know, it, it, it was, it was fantastic. And I was so happy and, and, and then the, the day after it's like, I would crash Mm -hmm. and I would be so like I would feel so empty Mm -hmm. and so sad and so um I don't know I don't even know if I can completely describe it but it was a it's it's a lonely lonely feeling you I, I just felt so alone and just so 
so sad. And you're the one who started really noticing that and gently talking to me about that because you've got a a really gentle way of bringing these things up to me and uh, making me feel safe and comfortable and still loved and admired by you. Uh, And and I think because of that, Kat, um, because you are patient and... Um, and, and just the dialogue and the communication you and I have been able, been able to have has helped me. Uh-huh. It's helped me a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I also remember you went after you'd have a bad migraine, like a series of days of migraines. When you finally started to come out of it, you'd, you'd be in a manic episode. I'd be in a manic episode. Yeah. yeah. Um, thank goodness I'm not getting those migraines anymore. You know, thank goodness. Yeah. Yes. I'm doing medical grade Botox, yes. which mm-hmm. I started about, you know, maybe what, nine months ago or yeah. so, maybe longer. It's, oh, it's been great. It's been great. Anybody that needs it, get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and but you're right i would get in these severe migraines for days on end and they're debilitating uh, they stop you dead in your tracks uh sometimes i couldn't work or function or perform and when you come out of that i would have this urgent desperate feeling to get as much work as done as possible mm-hmm. because i just missed a few days right i felt like i was just like kicked out of my life you know for and, but do you remember what that would also do the mania would do would sometimes trigger another migraine trigger another migraine yeah i remember i mean i, mean, I would go to the mirror and like look at my eyes and go what the fuck you know my eyes are so big you know i'd be like you need to calm down <laughs> <laughs> and i couldn't mm-hmm. you know i couldn't calm down i didn't know how to calm myself down i don't i don't know you know but i, I you know but i've been having these behaviors and um and these mood things, you know, OCD, you know, mm-hmm. uh, as far back as I can remember, you know, and I tried, um, I definitely went to, you know, I seeked medical, medical help, medical uh, attention. I saw doctors, I was prescribed medicines. Um, And the medicines, they didn't work for me. I know that they work for a lot of people and extremely helpful for a lot of people, but they didn't help me at all. And there was a couple different medicines. I think it made me worse. Um, So I stopped Hmm. uh, using medicine, medicine prescribed by doctors. And I think, you know, all those years ago, I think I started to feel hopeless, you know, and it's painful when you're stuck in a brain like mine, you know, I think people, um, it it can be painful, it can be lonely, it can be sad, it can be a lot of different things. And I think that's why a lot of people start to uh, self-medicate. I was just going to say that. Yeah. 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 And that's what I started doing. Mm -hmm. I started self-medicating, you know, um, and, and it took my pain away. So, you know, but then you become an addict. Mm Mm-hmm. And, and then that brings a whole slew of other problems and issues and yeah. obstacles and unhealthy uh, behavior and unhealthy. Which can affect your, your relationship, your career, yeah. everything. It can affect family, everything, yeah, everything. Everything. And I self-medicated in many different ways, not just through drugs, you know, mm. marijuana. Um, I medicated many different ways. I developed addictions to lots of different things Mm -hmm. um, just to take the focus off what was really happening to me and what I was feeling. Mm -hmm. I I felt like when we first started, we got together, you were addicted even maybe to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think I I was. Our song was mm-hmm. I picked a song for you and it was that song by I can't even remember the name of the group but it was mm-hmm. called Addicted mm-hmm. yeah and you're probably right you know I was probably well because you and when you came into my life you came into my life when I was just starting to really understand law of attraction spirituality reading Wayne Dyer Marion Williamson all these books um, really um, doing inventory on myself and, and I was at a place where I wanted, I wanted to be healthy. I wanted mm. to be better and I wanted to be healthy and I wanted to be happy and I wanted to be able to do it without, you know, marijuana and drugs and addiction and distractions. 
So here comes you in my life and you were a great distraction. You didn't mm-hmm. do drugs. You you didn't really have addictive behavior. Um, so you were really health, healthy and for, for me that way. But yeah, I think I definitely got all caught up in you and addicted to you and and all that stuff. And, and, oh, and we're lucky, Kat, because a lot of times when relations start out that way, they don't work. Right. They become unhealthy. Right. Yeah. But we worked it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We, we totally... Did you become addicted to me at all? <laughs> <laughs> Always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. So, yeah. It, you know what made me think of that, too? We just watched that documentary and um, Anthony... Was it, is it Anthony Bourdain? Bourdain? Anthony Bourdain. Boy, yeah. was that interesting. Super interesting. And, you know, I would recommend that uh, documentary to, to anybody. I... Anthony Bourdain, brilliant guy. Brilliant. Yeah. Super creative, brilliant guy. And perfectionist. Uh, perfectionist. I, I, you know, with, with I, I could relate to him mm-hmm. on a lot of different levels, do you know? Yeah. And of course, we know um, his life, you know, ended in tragedy. He didn't have a happy ending. He ended up taking his own life. And he, in the end, he ended up addicted to, I don't remember her name, but that actress. That actress, that yeah. woman. That's, yeah, he ended up addicted to her. Um, so it was sad, you know, it was sad that he couldn't find the help, the peace, the quietness of, of the mind, Mm -hmm. you know, and I said, and, and, and I, I certainly still, you know, struggle about that with with that, but I, you know, I didn't want this podcast, you know, to be all about me and I just sit here and talk about myself. Um, you know, I want, I, I wanted to, I wanted to actually talk about, look, you know, maybe some tools that I've learned, share some tools. Um, you know, I'm in the PMU industry and my anxiety, my depression, my racing thoughts, um, it could have prevented me from doing classes, doing, you know, this podcast, you know, I, I, I struggle with how I look on video and I get, I get, you know, super, you know, anxious, you know, beforehand, I mean, my pit sweat and it's like, <laughs> You know, and I think I do get a little irritable Uh trying to get the right camera angles and all that stuff. I don't know. Does she, Olivia? Do I, Olivia? Does she get a little bit irritable? (laughs) Just a little bit. Just a little bit. (laughs) But but you don't get mad at me. No. No. And and then, you know, Olivia is so patient. But I don't get so, I don't direct it at anybody. Well, I hope I don't. But I do, I feel myself getting irritable. And that's the anxiety creeping up on me because I'm such a perfectionist. I'm a Virgo. September 18th, I think Virgos tend to be perfectionist that's one of our part of your traits of your sign. part of our traits of our sign you know and pile on top of that you know ocd issues anxiety racing you know all this i'm a hot mess cat you know i'm a hot mess man i still love you yeah you know and i have my own stuff too everybody has stuff everybody has stuff. stuff everybody do you think there's anybody that doesn't have some sort of mental health issue on some level right no i think everybody has at least a little something at least a little something everybody's been depressed at least once in their life yeah 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 for sure you know um so you know i think i mentioned earlier i was always you know embarrassed uncomfortable scared uh, uh, afraid to open up about this publicly because of uh you you know because i teach classes i lecture you know i do all this stuff in pmu and um i i i don't know i guess i was just afraid people would look at me differently they would um i would be judged you know because it's hard to talk about this Mm -hmm. i mean it was i was supposed to you know do this podcast like last week the week before and i kept kicking it down the road because i was just really afraid to do it Mm -hmm. um but here i sit and I'm doing it, and uh, we'll see if I launch it or not. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? So I started opening up a little bit about it, um, and I think what really kind of gave me the courage to sit here today and, and open up um, is I did the um, Pretty Ambitious Summit. Yeah, that went really well. Yeah, Sheila uh, Bello. Um, gifted me the opportunity to lecture. I called it the healthy hustle. And I was able to, I think that was the first time, you know, publicly speaking to other PMU artists, um, you know, my peers, 
I, I really opened up and, and, and got really authentic and transparent and raw. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it felt, it felt good, Kat. It was, yeah. And it was really good. And I think it was, and I think it was, I think it was healing for me. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was so scared to look at the messages coming in after my lecture. You know, I got, I mean, just oodles and oodles and oodles of DMs and messages and, and it was, it, it was just those messages. Um, so many people resonated mm -hmm. with some of the things I was saying, some of the things that I feel, some of the things that I go through. And I mean, one woman watching the lecture, I mean, she sent me a beautiful DM and pictures of her daughter, her daughter's weightlifter, uh, young, like 15 years old. And her daughters heard me speaking in the background and stopped and gathered around the computer with her, with her mom yeah. to listen to my lecture. And that really super touched me. So it made me feel like, okay, okay, Taryn, this is, this is the universe telling you this, this resonates with people. People need to know that they're not alone. And I, you know, cause I felt alone for so long mm -hmm. or you feel ashamed or embarrassed or both. and you or both <laughs> and you try to hide it and you try to pretend that you know this doesn't happen to me you know and uh and whatnot you know and on instagram and facebook you know we only uh post you know the pretty shit you know myself included you know i mean i don't post pictures of myself or days that i'm down and depressed you know the covers of, you know we only post the pretty shit and that's what we that's what we see you know, and then we end up comparing ourselves to other people. Other people's pretty shit. <laughs> other people's pretty shit. And for whatever reason, we think that's reality, right? right? We <laughs> think that's reality, but that's the games and the tricks that our mind plays on us, mm -hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. our minds can play some really mean tricks on us. It can be very manipulative. Our mind and our thoughts can be very manipulative. It can be for me, you know. For, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think for everyone. For everyone. So um, some of my, um, so I'm just going to talk about probably my, the biggest uh, thing that I deal with that, that really super affects me massively. And that's my intrusive racing thoughts. Mm -hmm. Like I'm a manic thinker. Mm -hmm. Like the average person get 65,000 thoughts a day. Can you imagine? Wow. 65,000. So if the average person gets 65,000 thoughts a day, I know I'm not fucking average. <laughs> you know, I'm not normal. Right. And so, you know, maybe I'm getting a, a 125,000 or 130,000. Maybe I'm getting a quarter of a million thoughts a day. I don't know. There's no way to know, but I know I'm not the average person when it comes to thoughts. I know I'm riddled with intrusive racing thoughts. To the point where you can't sleep many times. Many to the nights. point where I can't sleep. And just actually, you know, went and saw my doctor about it, you know. Um, so it's, 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 just, it's just horrible. It's horrible. Horrible. Because horrible, you can't stop them, mm -hmm. you know. And I don't smoke pot no more. I've been sober from marijuana for, I don't know, nine years, eight, eight years maybe, eight, eight maybe nine years. Almost nine, I think. I think yeah. almost nine years. So I don't medicate anymore. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I tried meditation. I even went and sat with, you know, yoga people and, and people that meditate, trying to learn these skills. But are you kidding me? It's like, I'm just, it I, wasn't for you. It wasn't for me. And I wish to God it was. I know meditation and yoga helps so many people. Yeah, it does. So many. Mm -hmm. And I really gave it a good try. I tried several things and um, it just doesn't work for me. I can't like stop my thoughts, not that way. That was, just wasn't a tool that worked for me. So some of the things that do work for me is um, I have found that inaction, right? Inaction mm -hmm. breeds doubt and fear and more anxiety. Inaction, and that was me for years and years and years. I, I, I didn't know how to be proactive. Mm 
-hmm. So I was, I didn't really take action. If it didn't work, I'd walk away from it and I wouldn't seek anything else for a long, long, long time until it got so bad. And so I was inactive for, you know, you know, big periods of my life. And, um, and, and, and I, and, and that's true when you're in active, when you don't take action, that just breeds more doubt, more fear, more negative thoughts, more anxiety, more, 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 because you're just stewing in it. Too much time. It's mm-hmm. too much time, and you're just and you're you're mm-hmm. just letting it all come and stay and stew and swirl, and it's it's destructive. It's it's it can be dangerous. It can be dangerous and it's unhealthy. Mm-hmm. So you have to be. A disruptor you have to become a disruptor right of yourself of yourself of Mm -hmm. your own thoughts and you know I think in industries as of late or you know um, you know we would see people or hear people come into like someone new come into an industry and refer to themselves or their company as a disruptor and what that is is somebody is coming into an industry as a disruptor so they're coming in with new ideas new methods new ways of doing things that's going to start pushing the current industry leaders aside Mm -hmm. and eventually replace them and that's what we need to do to our thoughts those intrusive, negative, swirling thoughts. We have to become a disruptor. We have to disrupt them. We have to come up with new methods, new ways, push them to the side, and we have to replace them. And that's what I've become. I'm not always fantastic at it. It's constant work in motion. You're never cured, you're never healed. I am someone that will never be, you know, perfectly healed, 100% healed. Um, But I think the longer I apply these tools, the longer, um, you know, I work on myself and the better aware, um, the less time they sit in my brain. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. So I think the very first step is first you have to be aware. You have to be Mm -hmm. conscientious and aware that they're coming, that they're entering Mm -hmm. and that they shouldn't be there. Right. And I wasn't able to do that for a long time. I, I just thought everybody had these thoughts. Yeah, come to find out. A lot of people do, but not, not everyone has them, or not the way you do. Not the way I do, right. And I didn't really know that. Mm-hmm. I thought this is just brains. This is just mm-hmm. people. You know, everybody does, has this. Right. Um, yeah, well, I've, ha- I've had intrusive thoughts where I can't sleep at night, but it's not constant. Right. And it's not every day. Yeah. Yeah. So my, my, my intrusive thoughts are almost every day. Um, but, but I have found uh, activity that takes me, that doesn't allow those thoughts to uh, in, invade me. And, you know, one of those activities is four-wheeling, quadding. <laughs> yes. You know, and that's why I took to it so, so quickly and, um, and became an avid quadder. And, you know, we just, I just did that five-day day trip you know oh, in utah so fun but when i'm out there when i'm on the quad and I'm with my girls and you know you and we're quadding no it would i i couldn't believe it. it it's just i'm free you know it's like mm-hmm. i'm free of those thoughts and that depression i'm free of it and uh, and 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 what a, and it's just such a beautiful amazing feeling for me and those moments are, are few and far between Mm-hmm. so I quad as much as I can <laughs> <laughs> well you feel like a badass it's so fun <laughs> yeah it's so fun uh roller skating mm-hmm. does that for me you know um getting on a pair of roller skates and roller dancing and all that you know just just roller skating to music uh takes me out of that thought so we have to find activity um to disrupt the thought we have to take action and disrupt the thought not every day can I go jump on a quad and ride out in the de- do donuts out in the desert? So some things, very simple things that I do is um, dance. I mm-hmm. use, you know, I turn on music yeah. and I get in the mirror 
And sometimes I, I sing. Sometimes you catch me and I feel like, you know, like a <laughs> fucking idiot. <laughs> I don't <laughs> laugh at you. I know you don't laugh at me, but I still, like, I still feel like an idiot. I get all embarrassed. But, and I'll dance. You know, I'll do my, you know, Michael Jackson, my pop lock and my moves and all that stuff. And I dance. One of my favorite, favorite songs that can uh, disrupt the negative thoughts is uh the Bee Gees, staying alive mm-hmm. you know i love one republic love. counting stars mm-hmm. I, there's just a lot of badass songs i actually have a playlist you know a spotify playlist called disruptor and it's all these songs and there's no slow songs or sappy songs these are all songs that make me feel uh, like a badass mm-hmm. like like they, they just they just elevate me they lift me they make me feel good they make me want to you know dance tap my toe and sing and th- something as simple as that can disrupt those negative thoughts right mm-hmm. so that's a good tool that Excellent people tool. can use i have one question is elvis on that list elvis is on that list do you know what elvis song no i don't you don't? No, I have no idea. Hunk a hunk of bird and love. Oh, right on. I love that song. That's a great song. That's a great song. It's, it just gets me. It just it gets me going. It gets me going. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love it. Um, so TikTok dancing, uh-huh. right? Yeah. We just discovered that recent, just mm-hmm. recently, and that can get you out of that space. You know, when you're in that space, let's go find a trending little TikTok song. Let's learn it you and i just did neon moon and Uh it got us off the couch it disrupted those negative thoughts for me because i was i was not i I was you know in in a space i was dealing with intrusive thoughts and anxiety and And we laughed a lot yeah we went upstairs we put the we 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 put you know tiktok on and you know this one couple and Mm -hmm. uh and we just practiced and practiced and practiced for like an hour and then we did a few takes and we did it we had an audience (laughs) the puppies yes yes and we actually posted it on tiktok which gave me anxiety <laughs> but yeah. but it went over well it, went, it looked it looked good it, it looked was cute. cute i it thought cute. it was like super cute and it was fun and it was fun and it was exercise it brought you and i together it got us up and moving and dancing so you know so we're gonna do more of those because i think that's healthy for me mm-hmm. and it disrupts uh anxiety negative thoughts you yeah know? it's a fun thing to do together fun thing to do together um so 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 if someone is like me and they're getting anxiety anxiety ridden thoughts negative thoughts um put on some good music and dance go practice a tiktok song uh another thing they can you can exercise Mm -hmm. you know some people like to just hit the weights hit the treadmill and really you know the punching bag um get those endorphins going get those endorphins going martial arts you know things like that exercise um art like painting Mm -hmm. drawing can disrupt those thoughts or something as simple as doing puzzles Mm -hmm. can also disrupt and remove you know those uh those uh, those those types of of thoughts and and that and and anxiety Mm -hmm. right yeah i'm I'm thinking of another one too what's that loving on your dogs your pets your cats yeah sometimes they're playing with them that can be a disruptor yeah yeah just putting them on a leash and taking them for a walk and just observing how much joy Mm -hmm. that brings your doggies yes yeah it's like it's like you know um just something you know I, i i i would just encourage people not you know, to do something, mm-hmm. take action. Cause I didn't for so long and it was debilitating for me. So now I have these, these coping skills. Um, sometimes you can just call somebody, someone that you end up having really super interesting, uh, conversation with, you know, I have, lo- I'm lucky. I have lots of friends. Um, I have people in my life that we can chat about anything under the, we could talk about crickets and it's super interesting. I have friends that are musicians that are artistic that, you know, my dad is an yeah. interesting uh, conversationalist. So just picking up the phone and calling someone that you tend to have really interesting, stimulating conversation with can disrupt a series of negative thoughts or anxiety. 
Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, for sure. All right. So those are the, the, some of the tools that I have learned over the years. So I, I hope, um, I hope anybody watching today that, that, you know, suffers from this, um, maybe picked up, you know, a couple of tools that they can start implementing and give it a uh, shot. Yeah. And what's that? Give it a shot and give it a shot, you know, or maybe, um, they can share like in the comments below, you know, we post this on YouTube you can then share in the comments below, maybe some other things that I didn't mention yeah. that they do to disrupt, you know, those type of thoughts and that type of anxiety. Um, you know? Yeah, for sure. Cause yeah. if just, if just, if just one person learns something mm -hmm. and it, and it helps them, then it was worth it coming on here, opening up and talking about it. Right. Yes. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that I do is, well, I talk to myself, but I'm already talking to myself. <laughs> I have, I have internal dialogue, right? And that's my racing thoughts, you know, my racing thoughts. And I have these, this internal dialogue and I have these whole conversations with myself and I'm making things true that are not really true. It's not reality. So I have to, so I, I change, I'm, I'm getting much better at changing my dialogue. Or you open up and you speak to me about it and you, you tell me these thoughts and I'm like, Taryn, no, that's not real. Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, you know, <laughs> and I tell you a small percentage of my thoughts, you know, because I think you don't want to bombard me. I don't want to bombard you and I don't want to burden you. I feel, mm -hmm. I feel I could become a burden to you. Um, oh no. Well, but, but you do feel like that because it is constant and I, you know, and you and I, you know, we're very open. We're very transparent. And sometimes, sometimes I think you, sometimes I protect you, I think, and, and myself still sometimes mm -hmm. I think maybe you don't even realize the extent of because I don't even know how I would even show you the extent or explain the extent. Mm -hmm. I don't even think I have to. I just think you have this sense of, you know, when it's gotten to a place where it's not good. Right. You know, it's not good. Mm -hmm. uh, you recognize that. Yes. Uh, but a lot of times I, I can hide it. I can, you know, <laughs> from you. Mm -hmm. And I still do that sometimes, you know, mm -hmm. I do. Um, but you, if you can change your internal dialogue, so when you have a negative thought coming in, you verbally talk, you talk out loud and you know, you say, stop, I squash this negative thought. You do not belong here. You are not allowed here. You mean nothing. You have no power over me. My positive thoughts are a million times more powerful than my negative thoughts. I will say that out loud, out loud. I don't keep that dialogue in my head. Uh, the negative dialogue stays in my head, but my positive dialogue, um, I, I, I do voice, I put my voice behind that and I say it out loud. So I do I that too. Yeah, yeah. I squash this negative thought. Mm -hmm. You are not allowed here. You were not invited. You are powerless mm -hmm. over me. My positive thoughts are a million times more powerful than my negative thoughts, you know? And then I think something that we have to realize when we suffer from this is that we need to realize that, um, we need to remind ourselves that the reality of the situation or the impact of the situation is not realistic as what our mind is making it out to be, right? We blow it out of proportion. Yes. We make it huge. And we, we think the impact is gonna be massive and devastating. And in reality, it's not. Mm -hmm. So we have to remind ourselves of that, that uh, our, our, the, these thoughts can be manipulative and they can trick us. So uh, the, the situation is way out of proportion um, to what our thoughts are trying to convince us that it is. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. Yeah. Does that happen to you? Oh, yeah. I have intrusive thoughts all the time. Mm -hmm. But uh, not not as manic as you. Sometimes when I can't sleep. 
Yeah. That's when it's when it's really bad. When you can't sleep. Yeah. And I recite the same things. Those thoughts aren't as aren't powerful. My positive thoughts are powerful. Yeah. Does it work for you? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. So you know, sometimes sometimes I have days where these tools they're helpful but they're not working like they do on other days. You know, sometimes maybe I give up. Yeah. Maybe I get weak and I get exhausted and I just give up. You know, not perfect. Right. And sometimes I get overwhelmed. And those are the days I just curl up on the couch and zone out. Watch Netflix. Watch Netflix. Yeah. Yeah. I like to watch those murder dark shows. Murder show. I like to watch the dark documentaries. Like, the why do you have, then I looked at what I look at what's recorded and there's murder show after murder show after murder show. You know, and it, you know, we have a casita and like Mary Richardson comes out and stays in it, my dad and other people, and the Netflix is connected. Right? <laughs> yes. the, the contour, the recorded shows are connected. So anybody, I think I've thought about this a few times. Like anybody that, like your mom, your, your mom's coming in yes. a couple weeks. Anybody that gets on the TV in the casita and pulls up and sees all the recorded shows, they're going to think, what? She might uh, be worried for me. She might be worried for you. It's like, what the hell? You know, my daughter-in-law is like watching all this. Oh yeah, I watched like murderous siblings and American monster and snapped and... You know, but, and maybe I shouldn't be watching those. I've been trying not to record as many, you know, but I've been watching those my whole life, ever since I was a little kid. I like horror shows. I like I like all that stuff. But maybe that's why I like it, because it's dark, mm -hmm. you know? And I don't consider myself a dark person. I do consider myself a person full of light and hope and um, love and kindness and grace. And, you know, um, you know, my heart is good, my heart, but, but, but sometimes my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. For some reason, I think this it's is soothing a little cloudy. To you. I think it's soothing. It, I don't know. It is a little soothing too. Maybe I sit there and I go, "Well, at least I'm not that, that fucking one. bad." <laughs> Boy, shit could be worse for me. <laughs> God, maybe that's what I do, Olivia. I don't know. Maybe you know. I've never really sat um, and thought about why am I attracted to those dark shows. I never really analyzed it and thought about it. Yeah. But yeah, and I don't why. watch that many of them with you. If they're, especially if they're really gruesome, I can't bear it. And I'll start dreaming I know, about that. I know. And, then, and, I, and I get upset sometimes when you walk in. You're like, I'm not watching that. I'm like, I know. <laughs> you know, I have to change it, you know. But I haven't been watching as many. Yeah, no, I noticed that. You know, because I could sit and watch them like 10. I could binge on them for like 10 hours, you know. You know, but I feel. 10 hours. Yeah, you know, but I like, I'm like, maybe super street smart. I feel like I know, like I know stuff now. It's like no one's getting one over me. I know all the little tricks. Or you could get away with murder. Or I could probably get away with murder. Yeah, I tell you that all the time. I could get away with murder. <laughs> I see all the mistakes they make that get them caught. <laughs> you know, I know. I've had people, I've, you know, I've told people before, you know, here I am on, you know, a podcast telling the whole goddamn world that, you know, I like these, <laughs> these fucking shows. But I have told people before in classes and whatnot, and a lot of people like them, come yeah. to find out. No, I think a lot of people, they're super popular. They're very, very popular. They're all over Oxygen, you know, and IDTV and all over the place. But so, you know, at least I'm not the only one. I'm not alone. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how long we've been running? Are we at an hour or? 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Okay, so I'll wrap it up. Um, I just wanted to talk about um, anxiety a little bit because I know a lot of people have anxiety. I think a lot, a lot of people, um, of course, outside of PMU and uh, you know have it, but inside permanent makeup. Once I started opening up a little bit about this, um, you know, I've had a lot of people reach out to me that they also have anxiety, and so, and some of these people are, you know, big names, and mm -hmm. you know they're on video like I am, and they're 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 putting themselves out there, and you would never think that they have anxiety or deal with some, uh, you know, some mental health issues. Um, and I have gotten that comment that people were surprised that I have anxiety because I make it look easy, I guess, you know, doing tutorials and talking, you know, publicly, but you know, it's not mm -hmm. easy for me. You know, the torment I go through to actually get on camera. Um, so I wanted to talk about anxiety and how a, a good way for not just myself but other people dealing with anxiety to deal with it 
-hmm. and they call it um, anxiety reappraisal. So it's reframing anxiety, right? It's reframing mm -hmm. anxiety because, um, and it's reframing anxiety into excitement mm -hmm. because the feelings and emotions of anxiety and the feelings of um, and, and emotions of excitement are almost the same, physiologically the same. Like they, they come from the same place and it almost feels the same, right? You get the butterflies in your stomach, your pit sweat, your blood pressure rises, you get, maybe you start to talk a little fast, you get excited. And that's almost the same feeling that you get with anxiety. So if we can reframe anxiety into excitement, excitement is healthy for us whereas anxiety is not healthy for us right right so like pretty ambitious summit i mean for two or three weeks you even olivia you guys saw me in here you know i, I couldn't concentrate on much more you know than that and i was you know and i kept saying god i'm super nervous i have so and i had to reframe it as like i'm super excited mm -hmm. i'm super excited so instead of saying I'm really nervous about this, reframe that, I'm really excited about this. Mm -hmm. Instead of saying, you know, this is giving me anxiety, reframe it, reword it. This is giving me excitement. And that's I'm what excited you're about this. That's what you're telling the universe. That's what well. you're telling the universe. That's what you're telling yourself. That's now that's your internal dialogue. Because we tend to we tend to believe what we think, right? Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. law of attraction. So we have to change our thoughts. We have to change our internal dialogue. Um, and we have to start reframing, rephrasing things from negative to positive. And so it's, it's not an easy shift and it doesn't happen overnight. And I still have a lot of work to do. Um, but if you can use, um, that excitement, so, so then you, cause anxiety can stop us from moving forward. It can prevent us from accepting a really cool project or gig or engagement or lecture or something like that, right? Right. Um, I almost backed out a pretty ambitious summit. I, I know you did. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, and I said that, and I don't know if Sheila, you know, she might have thought I was uh, kidding, but I, but I wasn't. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really did almost back out a handful of times. Yeah, we had that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Trying to come up with a good excuse that she would believe, mm -hmm. you know, and. Uh, and, and of course I would never do that. Like I'm a person of my word. I wouldn't do that. Um, mostly cause I don't want to piss anybody off, <laughs> you know, but, um, so I just had to reframe that anxiety into excitement and that excitement that I felt, it pushed me through the anxiety and it propelled me to sit down and give that lecture, the healthy hustle lecture that day and by doing it by having that experience that experience gave me just a little bit more strength and a little bit more confidence to go into the next experience mm -hmm. right yeah yeah and I was proud of myself oh yeah you know mm -hmm. um the minute the lecture was done because it was virtual so you can't read an audience there's no energy like i'm used to being on stage and in front of front of you know live people you can read you know you can feel the energy and read the room but on that i couldn't and there was this message board you know where everybody was messaging but i was too nervous i couldn't look over there and kind of see what people were saying whether they were sending hearts or you know uh positive statements or not so right when you know the lecture was done you know i was super proud of myself first that I did it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, and then when I started reading the messages and, and the messages coming in, coming into, you know, my DM and you know, whatnot. Um, do you feel relieved? Also? I felt relieved. Yeah. I felt relieved. Um, proud. I felt, I felt proud. Um, I felt elated, elated mm -hmm. high. Mm -hmm. Um, and I didn't really have a crash after that did you notice that about yeah. me mm -hmm. i didn't crash i didn't uh, crash that night i didn't i didn't the next day i didn't crash i actually woke up the next day and something 
felt so right it's like I felt because me and Livy will have like little talks you know um, like I'll spout off sometimes about you know spiritual stuff and when I'm talking that something feels so right in me when I'm speaking it because I speak it from a place it's raw mm -hmm. it's a it's 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 authentic for me right mm -hmm. and um it's ingrained it's ingrained in me because law of attraction I think saved my life you know, um, that may sound dramatic to some people, but I do think that. I mean, do I mean it as literal as I might be dead? Uh, no, I don't mean it as literal as that, but I was in a dark space walking a dark path and starting to feel hopeless. And when you start to feel hopeless, if that hopelessness is allowed to grow and grow and grow, then, then you know, it gets really scary. You know, we have mm -hmm. to have hope. You have to have hope. If you don't have hope, you have nothing. You have to have hope and faith. And I started to lose hope and faith. Like, this is my life. Found spiritual law of attraction, spiritual law, mm -hmm. started practicing it. And, um, and then started implementing it, living it, speaking it. That led me to permanent makeup three or four years later. Permanent makeup gave me purpose gave me something to offer other people, something I was good at. It was something that I could dive into and excel at, work on, be proud of, make a living. And uh, so, yeah, I, I, I think, I think it, I think it, uh, I think it saved, it saved me, it saved me. You know, who knows what I would have become <laughs> if I didn't find law right. of attraction. So that's why, you know, law of attraction is uh, everything to me. And, um, and I think some people think law of attraction or manifestation is just um, an avenue to bring to you, uh, riches. you know, riches, uh, brand new cars and money and wealth, which it can. But that, for me anyway, that is not the core, the true meaning, the core, the importance and the value of law of attraction law of attraction for me is living in optimism hope grace love kindness you know that is law of attraction you know first learning and and belief in yourself all that for yourself when you have that for yourself you can start extending that to everybody else right mm -hmm. so because i wasn't able to extend that to other people many 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 years ago because they didn't have that for my own self mm -hmm. i didn't know what it felt like you know yes no i i totally understand yeah mm -hmm. all right right on yeah did you miss anything no no i don't think i missed anything and this wasn't that bad i mean i put on extra i think i put on two different types of deodorant <laughs> secret platinum I, I think and you dove some, some here you keep here i do keep here yeah because i was super nervous about doing this i'll just be honest you know i was really really nervous I'll be nervous when this launches. You know, we're going to launch this next Friday. Um, so, you know, it launches during October. Um, and I hope I didn't talk too much about myself. I didn't really want to make this like about myself per se, but I had to talk to, about myself a little bit. So, um, you know, so they understood me a little bit, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, yeah, and I want, you know, want them to feel me and uh and i want and i want people to know that um you know no more shame no more guilt you know if if you're suffering from these things you know that's constricting that's probably the most dangerous and destructive element of mental health issues is the shame and uh keeping it quiet and trying to hide it you know so and I think there's other people out there that do really exploit that about themselves and maybe use it, you know, um, they lead with that constantly. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I certainly don't do that and, and that's, you know, not where I want to go with this. I just, I just want to connect with people and, uh, you know, and I just want them to know, look, if I can, if I can learn coping skills and and have, um, you know, a happy life. And, and tools, with tools. With tools, with tools. Yeah, because I think maybe there might be a lot of people like me where medication doesn't work, uh, meditation doesn't work, yoga doesn't work, the conventional, um, you know, therapies 
just don't work. I think there's a lot of people where the conventional therapies just don't work like, like me, Mm -hmm. you know? So, you know, we have to keep, we have to keep trying different tools until you find a set of tools that do work for you and, or, you know, and that help you. It's important. It's important, you know, because life is short. Life is short, right? You know, you want to live it as healthy and happy as possible. I want to, I want to be happy. For me, the desire, the want to change myself and to be happy was way more powerful than all the icky stuff that weighted me down for years and still can weigh me down from time to time. Rear its ugly head from time Rear to time. Rear its ugly head from some, some time. That, that, that desire, you know, to, to want it for myself, um, way more powerful. And it has to be that for other people. You know, the, the desire to have that for yourself has to be way more powerful. And it can be. And open up and talk to, talk to people. You have to talk to people about it. Yeah, you do. Yeah. So October, mental health screening month, depression awareness month. And uh, especially in today's world, you know, with everything going on, I think a lot of people either depression either got worse or they're feeling depression uh for the maybe maybe the very first time because of you know the the state of the world and how people respond to each other these days Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i think this was good it was really good all right Mm -hmm. all right what are, you, what, are you, what are you making for dinner? <laughs> me? You're taking me out. Are, no, I got a machine class tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I got a machine class tomorrow. We'll go out tomorrow. All right. All right, guys. Woo! Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, well, we talked about some, some of my personal issues. And, um, you know, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope, I hope uh, if you needed, needed uh, to hear this today, you found it. Um, if you needed someone to connect with or resonate with, um, I hope you did, uh, stay healthy, everybody. And we will see you next time on a tatter of fact. <laughs>